road legal Maserati MC12 was created for one reason and one reason only to return the mark to top flight international sports car racing after an absence of 37 years. Based on the Enzo from sister mark Ferrari but dramatically reclothed by designer Frank Stevenson, the only externally visible carryover part is that curved windscreen. Underneath this new and aerodynamically superior carbon fibre bodywork lies the Enzo's original engine gearbox and running gear. And while of course a highly tuned and developed racing car would later follow, this road car's performance had to be curbed in order to preserve the Enzo's position as Italy's premier supercar. just 500 rpm shy of the Enzo's which rendered the MC12 with a meager 621 brake horsepower at seven and a half thousand. In total the weight of this car comes in <laughs> at 1500 kilos and although it's slightly detuned engine and steel discs make it statistically inferior to the Enzo. It's larger and more aerodynamically efficient bodywork make it better suited to its real raison d'etre, which is to form the basis of a dominant racing car. When Maserati announced this car in 2004, it was for an initial production run of just 25 cars and all of them were pre-sold immediately despite their whopping 600,000 euro price tag. In fact, demand was so strong that they built a further 25 the following year. Now this is the first time that I've ever had the chance to see these two cars side by side, which gives us a fantastic opportunity to compare their similarities and differences. Now while I would argue that Ken Okuyama's styling of the Enzo is more futuristic and adventurous than Frank Stevenson's simplistic treatment of the MC12, let's remember that the Maserati prioritized racing it had to put function over form, more so perhaps than they needed to do with the Enzo. So while the shared windscreens do create a similar roof line between the two cars, the MC12 has these longer overhangs at the front and especially at the rear, giving the designers the opportunity to carve big aerodynamic diffusers into the underbody to create that all important ground effect. The MC12 made its racing debut in the final rounds of the 2004 FIA GT series, despite its homologation still remaining contentious. Maserati had brought a sledgehammer to crack a nut, and everybody feared that such an inevitably dominant car could undermine any series in which it raced. At that time, a mid-engine carbon-tubbed supercar was really not in the spirit of GT racing. 
and while the FIA did eventually let it into their series, Le Mans organisers, the ACO, remained steadfast in their rejection of the car, thanks mainly to the fact that it breached their maximum dimension requirements. The car was forced to endure a transition period in 2005. And although it was allowed into the American Le Mans series, it was ineligible for points and subjected to a litany of aero, weight and power restrictions. In the face of all of this opposition, so capable was the MC12 that still it reigned supreme, winning 40 races, six team titles, two manufacturers' titles, six drivers' championships, from a total of 94 races between 2005 and 2010. Now, of course, this isn't that race-winning GT1 car, but it does have a race mode, so I'm hopeful that it will give us a little indication of what made the MC12 such a dominant force. of 59% towards the rear, just 41% at the front. And that's supposed to make the car feel quite progressive as you apply the power. But I have to say that today I'm finding it somewhat twitchy. But I like it. It's got a theoretical top speed of 205 miles an hour. We're not gonna reach that on this circuit, but in this short throw, I'm up to 180 already. Woo. It would be wrong to conclude a film about this car without reflecting on Maserati's illustrious racing past, particularly from the wheel of a car whose color scheme deliberately evokes that of the iconic Tipo 61 bird cages that raced so successfully in the early 1960s. While it's true that this may really be a Ferrari under the skin, the designers and engineers at Maserati have done the brand's heritage proud. And I'm sure they allowed themselves a wry smile when this car lapped the infamous Nürburgring one second faster than the Enzo. 